Hi, I'm John from Just Whiskey. If you like today's show, please give it the thumbs up, like, and subscribe. And thanks for all the new subscribers coming on board and sharing my journey. And remember, folks, it's Just Whiskey. Today, we are going to be talking about and comparing Talisker, specifically the Talisker, the, the 2021 uh, Diageo special release Talisker 8 natural cast strength coming in at a whopping 59.7% ABV. The retail on this is or was, if you can find it, about $115. Yeah. And we're going to comp be comparing it to an independent bottling by <clears throat> Fat Dram, and this is a 200 milliliter sample. It was distilled November of 2010 and bottled on August of 2017 by Fat Dram, it's product of Scotland, aged six years, coming in at 58.9% ABV, and they list the cask type as a refill hogshead. Natural color, non-chill filtered, 200 milliliters. I paid $30 for this sample. And then we have the classic Talisker 10. This one, the standard release, comes in at 45.8% ABV. Most likely chill filtered, most certainly color, color added in my opinion. And this is the older bottling, older packaging that says um, the only distillery on the Isle of Skye. And we know now that Toraveg, uh, because of Toraveg, um, now there are two <laughs> distilleries on the Isle of the Skye. So Talisker did a rebranding, repackaging, and um, I think they packaged the new packaging. I think it says the oldest distillery on uh, on the Isle of Skye. <clears throat> and the retail on the standard Talisker 10 offering about 50 bucks. Um, you might be able to find it 45 to 55 dollars, maybe even pushing 60 dollars in some areas. But for around 50 ish. You can still find it if you uh, if you shop around. <clears throat> okay, we are going to um, start off with the Fat Dram Talisker Six cast strength, and it's it's very light in comparison. You know, just the uh, the six compared to the eight, it is lighter. Um, okay. On the nose, the nose is not as prominent as the official bottling by Talisker, Talisker 8. So the nose, vanilla, a little medicinal, not really picking up on uh, peat or peat smoke or ash, really. This has got some complexity going on. You can tell that it's more youthful, more spirity compared to the eight-year-old. However, it's sweet, it's fruity, it's briny, it's salty, it's salty, and it has a uh, a creamy, mellow mouthfeel. with a comforting medium medium finish, medium to long finish. The creaminess hangs on the palate, and then you end up with that, that slight chest burning uh, that lets you know that it is cast strength. Um, 
and the finish is a bit puckering from the salt so there's a slight astring astringency there but a, a, a very nice experience very nice experience all right a quick little uh palate cleanse okay the talisker eight um quick little blurb in the back i'm not gonna read the whole thing but this furious spirit writhes with cereal aromas cereal aromas soon enveloped by the briny seaweed and mountain smoke you know they say that this one is uh taken the, taken from the uh most heavily smoked stocks but although there is peat in there I, it's not overpowering or over, overbearing by in my opinion by any means the soft oily texture smoothly insinuates itself carrying forward a bold taste with licks of savory salt definitely light sweetness definitely and pronounced smoke mm. I don't think the, it's pronounced smoke, but from our most heavily peated reserves, um, I disagree with that as well. The elemental power of the sea is acclaimed, finishing long and lingering. The smoke endures. This is a sea monster. This sea monster breathes fire. <laughs> Hence the, uh, the super cool graphic. Now, I've previously reviewed uh, the... Uh, the bottle opening uh, of this. Um, but now I've spent some time with it <clears throat> over the last few weeks. The nose is much more pronounced than the independent fat dram. On the nose, I get a grassy note, grassiness, peat and ash, and fruit notes, candied fruit notes palette again comparing it to the fat dram it is amped up those two extra years um, in whatever cast they use there's really a lot of uh, a lot of flavor coming out of that. You, I, mean, I am picking up some medicinal notes. It's sweet, candied fruits, briny, salt, astringent, puckering. The finish is long and thick, with the lingering candy fruits. Not as much of a warming in the chest as the six-year-old um, I don't feel a need to add water to either one of these in in my opinion quick little water dip there <clears throat> and now the classic 10 year old this bottling is is from a at least a year maybe two years ago because they've rebranded it since so um, with this code, I cannot figure out what year it is, but it's probably a 2019 or a 2020. Okay, classic Talisca 10. On the nose, as soon as I open the bottle, apple cider vinegar, which transitions into apple on the nose. Prominently light peat. little medicinal compared to the cast strength obviously um, the mouthfeel is watered down but <clears throat> it's very complex there's a lot going on in there um, you're getting the sweetness a bit dry it is briny 
a bit medicinal. I'm picking up a little bit of spearmint flavored gum, like a Wrigley spearmint gum in the background. I'm also picking up um, limes. And on the nose, too, I forgot to mention it, but a little floralness, like roses and lavender. The finish. The finish is medium, dry, sweet. And Talisca makes reference to their pepperiness, but it's very slight. On the back, on the very back of the palette, um, I am picking up a, a slight, very slight black peppery, you know, tingliness, uh, black pepper spice on there. I'll tell you, whenever I crack open a Talisca 10, I really enjoy it. It is one of the most quaffable bottles that, um, that I enjoy. Um, and, and it's mainly for the price. You can't go wrong. Um, yes, you know, yes, it's chill filtered, but you are getting close to 46% ABV. Um, it is colored, so I don't like any of that. But for the price, I, 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 just, it's, I just constantly reach for it, and I thoroughly enjoy it. It's got a lot going on. Um, it, it, it certainly has complexity. Now, for, for price, you know, I, I, um, some people defend the price of, of Diageo, you know, $115 for this one for an 8-year-old. You know, compared to the the new the Lagavulin 12, you're gonna that's about 150 or 160 dollars. It's expensive, but I compared it. You know, for 30 dollars for a 200 milliliter, just for rough math, if you times it by four, 800 milliliters, um, that's 120 dollars. You take off the last 50 millimeters, and and you're about 110, 115 dollars equivalent to this. The, the Talisker 8 by Diageo, the official bottling, cast, natural cast strength, um, was $115. So yeah, when you buy a sample, you expect to pay a bit of a premium for the smaller, convenient size as well. Um, but <clears throat> I did want to talk quickly you know, about, about price. You know, this Talisker 8 was $115. I can still buy a Kilcarran 8 cast strength between $80 and $90, um, closer to $90, let's say. Um, Highland Park cast strength. There's no age data on that, um, but it's it's probably, in my opinion, around six, seven, eight year old, um, maybe even nine years old. I don't know for sure. That's you can get that for $85. Um, a Springbank 12 cast strength, a 12-year-old, I can still get it for about $100, uh, maybe $105. Um, and then, I know it's uh, apples and oranges, but Lagavulin 8. Lagavulin 8 is 48% ABV, so it's not anywhere near the cast strength of these. But Lagavulin 8 is a great bang for your buck. Um, I can still find these for $45 to $50. The prices seem to be creeping up a little bit. But a Lagavulin 8 at 48% for $50. And the Lagavulin 12 cash strength is $150. So you can buy three Lagavulin 8, which is an excellent dram. Great value for money, in, in my opinion. Um, all right, so... Which one do I like best? How am I going to rate and compare them? Um, you know, it's tough with the independent bottle bottling. Um, so the rating system is for my enjoyment. It was more of a curiosity factor. You know, I'm not going to be running out and buying another sample of this. Um, but I did enjoy it. You know, for the $30, it was a nice little experiment. 
how would I rate it, you know, for what it is? Um, in the mid 80s, you know, um, in my opinion, um, 85 to 87, somewhere in that in that range. Um, now that I've spent some time with this Talisker 8, it has opened up, um, it has improved, and it has shown its complexity. Um, I, I really am enjoying it, but it's the, the, the tough is a, the price is a big ouch for me. That's, that's the tough part. Um, but still, it's, it's quality there. Um, so I'm going to rate this probably closer to what I, when I first cracked it open. Um, when I first cracked it open, my initial thought was, okay, 85. And I think in my first review, uh, the cr opening up for the first time, I think um, I gave it more like an 86 to 88. And I'm going to stick with that, um, 86 to 88. I do wish it maybe had a little bit more age to it to see what that would, would bring out to it. On a good day, might even rate this an 89. Um, it, 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 is, it, is, it is nice, but I'm going to stick with, it, you know, 86, 87, 88 in that, in that range, in the, in, the, in the higher 80 range, a B plus kind of a, kind of a thing. Um, and then the Talisca 10. Uh, I absolutely love this. I don't like the fact that it's probably chill filtered. I don't like the fact that they're adding coloring to it, but it is a quaffable, enjoyable, so enjoyment wise, I enjoy this as much as the Talisk Eight, probably even a little more. To be honest with you, um, I have no problem rating this a solid eighty-eight. This Talisk Ten, um, for my enjoyment, um, and for the price, I think it's uh, it's well well worth it. So there you have it, folks. I hope you enjoyed today's show. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. And remember, it's just whiskey, folks. So hats off to you all, and take care.